Hey guys, Ryan Lutz here. Today I want to show you how I tear apart the rear clip and service it, maintenance it before I go to my next big race that I go to. Uh, so first thing I like to do is make sure that everything's working freely. So I kind of spin the drive line, make sure the drive shafts are straight, nothing's bent, everything feels smooth. So I know there's nothing like obvious that I'm looking for to replace in that regard. So make sure that the suspension's moving freely. If it's bound up, I want to find out why. I want to make sure the articulation of my sway bar links or the upper camber links are smooth. And if any of that stuff is not as just stated, I would be looking at that right away to do part of my rebuild on. So I want to get access basically to my diff here. So take off the D block. Now, Pull out the hinge pins as well, and as I'm doing that, make sure that they spin freely. If they're not spinning freely, uh, use some kind of reamer or whatnot. Or if you can actually feel a bend in them, you know, it's probably good to replace them because you want all that to be free. Uh, next, I want to get into that dip area, so I'm going to undo the sway bar links up here. Switch to my 2.0. Pull off the four screws for the back of the diff case. Okay. Set the diff case aside. And then we have a couple pieces here now. So diff-wise, we can see right there, I got a little O-ring that goes around my bearing holder that is broke, so I will replace that. I'm not sure that really ever makes much of a difference. It's more of a ceiling thing, but I'll replace it anyways. I'm gonna look at my out drives, make sure that they're not wearing out too badly. I'll spin my diff on both sides, make sure the bearings are spinning freely. I don't feel any notching it, notching this, or I don't feel like any SS oil's been in there to where they're not spinning freely. If that was the case, I'd either replace the bearings or clean them out. I can see my grease is holding pretty well there. And everything feels pretty smooth, but I'll probably still rebuild it for the next race. Uh, so I guess while I'm, I'll put the rest of the rear end assembly to the side and I'll take apart the diff. I always hold my ring gear portion to the left because I have shims in here and that way I always put it back in the same way. So that way I always know the ring gears on the left and this one will go on the left. So then I'll take apart the diff here. And I set that to the side. And then as that drains out, I'll go back to my rear clip assembly. Check my bearings here, make sure everything feels good. They feel good, but I'm still gonna tear it apart just to show you. And just because this is a big race coming up, I really wanna make sure everything is very good. So pop out the rear CVD. Shims you have, make sure they go. Don't lose them. And we'll pop out the bearings. Okay. So then I'll take a microfiber. Got some good dirty ones I've been using for a long time. Wipe off the bearings, make sure they spin freely. Make sure the axle is all clean. And then I can even tear this apart and really make sure it's cleaned out good. So, knock out the pin. Make sure this spins, the dry shaft spins freely into the little coupler here. And a lot of times you get some dirt in here. Some people oil or grease this as well. I don't usually because a lot of the tracks I go to are pretty dirty and it would just bind up with grease or um, with dirt, I feel. So I just kind of wipe it out, wipe off the ball, make sure that nothing's too worn out here. If all that looks good and this still stays smooth, I will reassemble it. And then, you know, after a while, these whole areas they start to wallow out as well so sometimes it's good if you have like on the Agama here we have two different options to use the opposite one and it can tighten everything back up again so that all looked good start rebuilding it bearings were good again if any of it's bad replace it because you don't want any of that stuff to fail on you 
after you spend all this time, you spend all the money to get there to race, I'm gonna make sure it all finishes for you. So, put that back together. And then you do the same to the other side. And the other thing I'll check is this here. Break this loose. Sometimes like I don't change this very often because really crank down on this to make sure this doesn't come loose. But we'll do it here. As again, big race coming. Pop out the bearing. Sorry, the pinion there. Got two bearings. Holding this in. So we'll wipe off those bearings. Make sure they feel really good. Both feel really good. I can still feel some oil in them, so I'll wipe off the pinion. Maybe wipe off the little gears on it. The teeth and kind of examine it. Make sure there's no chip teeth. Everything looks good on that. Okay. And then we'll set that stuff aside for a second. And once we're kind of down to just the plastics here, I'll set up a towel. There's a little bit of end dust. It's my preferred cleaner. Spray a little bit on all the plastics. Use a nice brush, a long brush that kind of clean it all away, clean everything up. And dust shines it up pretty good. And then any excess, you just kind of wipe it down with the microfiber. Okay. Once that's all done, we'll reassemble the rear pinion. I'll show this in another video, but we'll retake this out because this is such a critical part. Uh, again, make sure that your set screw is flat on the end for this assembly. Then we're going to use some Loctite on there, and then also I'll put a little bit also into the threads. I will start it. Set it on there, give it a light push. This thumb is pushing very lightly, just enough to hold it in place. Make sure you get the set screw onto the flat spot. And then once you get it snug, not too tight yet, make sure it all spins freely. And as long as it's spinning freely and you don't have really any back and forth play, you crank down on it. And this is what I do, the 10 second hold. So I'll crank it, hold it for 10 count. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Release. And that should stay pretty good. All right. And then, as the diff's still kind of cleaning up, just go back, wipe down the hinge pins, make sure they're all smooth and free. I have this uh, chainsaw file, and I'll use that into my arms, kind of like as my reamer. Obviously, you can use a regular reamer. Uh, for those curious, this chainsaw file is about a 395, so it's a 4 mil chainsaw file. It's actually wearing down a little bit, so I can actually use a, a new one here soon. But and then the other thing to make sure, depending if you're using plastic out here or this aluminum bit, uh, the aluminum one, I have it all tightened down here with set screws against the pin that goes through it. So this doesn't spin. If I didn't have that, uh, I'd want to make sure that this spins freely as well, the outer one. But I'll make sure the action here is all smooth. As long as that looks all good. Move forward. So next would be the rebuilding of the diff. Once you got your diff all done, it's time to reassemble. 
I like to use a little bit of the Protec RC White Premier Gear Grease. Just put a little light coating around the gears. And we can reinstall the diff, the diff cover, tighten the screws. After the screws are all tight, make sure it spins freely, feels good. Alright, now it's time to install the hinge pins again. So I will put the drive shaft into the out drive, put the hinge pin through the arm, make sure it's all free, spins smooth, nothing's bent. Okay. Same thing to the other side. that the drive shafts in the out drive. Okay. Then you can put the D block on. Alright, then we'll lay it down flat. I'm gonna reinstall tighten up the uh, sway bar ends here. So what I want to do when I do this, I want to make sure that I do both of them the exact same distance. So and I also want to make sure they're kind of both free as I'm putting them on. I don't want to put like a stress against them. So I kind of want them to tighten up the same way. What I mean by that is I can demonstrate it all. So you can see I have both are tightened with a set screw pushing them straight down. If I were to be pushing against it, it might set it offset a little bit. So I kind of want both to be the same in that regard. Just want everything to be equal left to right. Make sure everything feels smooth. And that is how I rebuild the rear clip. And I'm ready to go racing. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you in the next one.